Here we will look at capillary varieties and how their anatomical structure affects their permeability. If you recall, capillaries are the smallest vessels across which uh, exchange of nutrients and gases and electrolytes occur with the tissues. And so we have a capillary up the top here shown in cross section. We have a red, red blood cell suspended in the plasma inside of it. What we want to do is we want to look at the capillary walls. So we're going to sort of blow up a section of this and bring it down below here and look at a, uh, several different varieties uh, of structure that we have. Now, recall the uh, exchange occurs across these capillaries for both hydrophilic and lipophilic solutes. The lipophilic solutes aren't really concerned with passageways across those cells, right? They can diffuse through the lipid bilayer and uh, enter or exit these tissues, right? The blood gases are very good at this sort of exchange. Uh, hydrophilic solutes like glucose or other nutrients have to pass through those cells or between those cells in some fashion. And so those capillaries are divided up into three main categories, the continuous capillaries, the fenestrated capillaries, and then the discontinuous capillaries, the sinusoids are a good example there. And so the continuous capillaries, what that means is that the capillary wall has a continuous layer of endothelial cells, those red cells up, down, up here. Now they're sort of brick colored down below here. Now recall all epithelial cells are attached to a basement membrane. That's that layer of connective tissue secreted by these cells. And those cells are essentially attached to it. They also have a glycocalyx. Uh, I've shown that in the blue up here, right? That would be attached to the luminal surface of these uh, endothelial cells, right? The cells that form the wall of those capillaries. Now, all three of these uh, layers, the glycocalyx, the cells themselves, and the basement membrane form barriers to movement of solutes. And so in continuous capillaries, we have a continuous a, 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 a basement membrane that has no gaps in it. We have endothelium. There are paracellular uh, gaps here, pores. They're very small. And they tend to only allow small solutes in water to pass through, right? So we're showing our permeant hydrophilic solutes. Remember, our lipophilic solutes can go right through. Larger solutes, like the plasma proteins, would be trapped in the bloodstream. They cannot exit readily and enter the interstitial fluid out here. Now, when we move from continuous capillaries into another type, the fenestrated capillaries exist where we need a much enhanced permeability to essentially the same things that were permeable over here in the continuous capillary, water and the small solutes. In this case, though, the, uh, the pore size between the endothelial cells is larger. We often have diaphragms. These are protein meshes that uh, connect those cells. They act essentially like a sieve, helping to limit the loss of proteins. In other words, those proteins are once again reflected by that uh, capillary wall and retained within the bloodstream. We find capillaries of this type where we need this much uh, more dramatic exchange of water and small solutes. This occurs in places like the kidney or the intestines where we have large amounts of these small solutes and water moving across that capillary wall. Now the discontinuous capillaries over here on the right, now we have gaps in that basement membrane. We have much larger pores between the uh, endothelial cells and therefore permeability to the large solutes and even the cells. Sometimes the red blood cells can pass across these as well. Well, where might you want this type of capillary with these, these big gaping holes in it? Well, if you think about it, where are the plasma proteins produced? They are not produced within the bloodstream. The same is true for red blood cells, right? They're produced in the bone marrow. The plasma proteins are produced by liver cells. We need to get them into the bloodstream across that capillary wall. And so in those locations, like the liver, like the bone marrow, we need these capillaries that have these big holes that are gonna allow us to move much larger solutes uh, back and forth across that capillary barrier.